In quadrat hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis is going to be that VMR equals one. And remember, when VMR equals one, this is asserting that the point pattern is random. And the alternative hypothesis can either be non-directional, we can just search for a VMR not equal to one, in other words, asserting that the point pattern is not random, or we can do a directional test. We can look for VMRs less than one, asserting that the point pattern is regular or uniform or dispersed, or we can have the VMR, the, the alternative hypothesis that the data are clustered, that the VMR is greater than one. So before when we did goodness of fit tests, we always assumed that we were dealing with a right-tailed test. Okay, but now with, uh, with this VMR or with the uh, point pattern analysis and quadrat analysis, we can actually do left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed tests. So if this is the chi-squared over here, we've got the uh, we've got the uh, expected value of chi-squared over here to be m minus one, because remember, chi-squared equals m minus one times vmr, and under the null hypothesis, ho is that vmr equals one. So in that case, the chi-squared is just m minus one, and that's this location over here. And what we are going to look for are significant differences away from this location, away from this value of chi-squared. So if we have alpha, we can, and we have a two-tail test, we can put half of alpha in each tail. Or if we have a one-tail test, we're just going to put all of alpha in one tail, or we're going to put all of alpha in the other tail. And we can do the same thing. We can find the critical values. We can then calculate chi-squared equals m minus one times the MR. And we can plot this chi-squared into this, into this chart to see if it's in a zone of rejection or in the zone of acceptance. Now, one of the things that you're going to find is that the table at the back of your book only gives you uh, right-tailed test information. So the chi-squared tables at the back of your textbook only talk about the right tail of chi-squared. Because in most applications of goodness of fits, it really is, uh, we only use chi-squared on the right tail. It's just this weird um, quadrat analysis, which is, you know, an important aspect of uh, geographical analysis, but it's not such a commonplace statistical technique outside of geography, then, you know, it's unusual to actually find chi-squared tables that talk about the left tail. So what I'm going to show you is a way to use Excel to, to, to calculate these uh, probabilities. Here we have Excel. And we can use a function called the chi squared inverse function, which is this one. So it returns the inverse of the left tail probability of the chi squared distribution. What does that mean? Essentially, what we are going to do is enter in the probability and the degrees of freedom that we're interested in, and this function is going to give us a critical value. So if we were interested in, say, a left tail being 5% of the area, 0 0.05, we're going to put 5% as the probability, and in our case we have um, m minus 1 degrees of freedom, so we had 10 minus 1 degrees of freedom, so we can put a 9 there, and that tells us that the critical value is 3.325. So going back to our slideshow, 
in the case where we have a, a left tail test and we had 5% in the area, the critical value over here would be 3.25. What if we wanted 5% in the right side? How do we use Excel to give us that? Well, we essentially need to change this 5% to 95% because this is going to give us uh, this probability is the probability from for chi-squared being equal to uh, between 0 and 95%. So it's the cumulative proba probability. So if we wanted 5% in the right tail, then we have 95% up to this chi-squared. So we have 95% of the area between 0 and 16.9, leaving 5% in the right tail. And uh, the critical value for that case would then be 16.91. So if we had 5% in this tail over here and 9 degrees of freedom, the critical value is 16.9.